Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I wanted to talk a bit about farming contracts. Farming contracts have been out for a few weeks now but I want to see how profitable they actually are. So I want to see how much of your invested money is returned on average. For example if we broke even doing farming contracts I would call that an extreme win because some of these seeds are very expensive. Now on top of that I want to show you a very efficient way on how to do farming contracts because there's a few different methods you can employ to get more farming contracts done per hour. So yeah I hope you enjoy and let's get started. So to begin with here, I'm going to be doing hard farming contracts. However, all of these techniques can be applied to a lower level contracts as well. So in my inventory, I have one of each assignable seed from hard farming contracts. At the bottom, we have regular tree seeds. Above that, we have um, herb seeds. Then we have uh, fruit tree seeds, allotment patches, bush seeds, as well as the other ones like the white lily, the celestia seed, and the potato cactus seed. So to get your very first farming contract, you want to talk to the guildmaster Jane and go down to contract. Now, I already have one assigned. So for example, my farming contract right now is to grow some watermelons. However, this is where a bit of pre-planning comes into play. If you already have watermelons grown and you have not checked their health or harvested them in any way, you can instantly complete this farming contract. Now, currently I have nothing planted just to show you how you set this up. So to get the most farming contracts done per day, you want to grow the most time-consuming plants in the farming guild. So for example here, we have the different tree seeds. We have the U seed, the redwood tree seed, the magic seed, and the maple seed. What you want to be growing is a magic seed because that will be taking the longest amount of time to grow. Now, the reason I'm not saying redwood tree seed is because the redwood tree has its own patch. So you're always going to be wanting to grow one of those. So this is kind of just min-maxing. It's not extremely important that you have the longest uh, tree to grow in each patch. However, more important than that, you want to have at least one plant growing that is assignable at your contract level. So for example, a hard contract for fruit trees, I could plant either a papaya tree seed, a palm tree seed, or a dragon fruit tree seed. It doesn't really matter too much. There's probably an equal chance of it getting assigned either of those. Again, for the herb seed, it doesn't matter too much. They all grow at the exact same rate. So I could plant a torsal seed, a dwarf weed seed, a lantadime seed, a cadentine seed, or a snapdragon seed. Now in the rare case that you actually have two patches, which is the case with allotments, you want to plant one of each. So for example, in a hard contract, there's only two assignable allotment patches. So I want to have a snapegrass seed planted and a watermelon seed planted. That will guarantee me that if I get an allotment assignment, I can complete it instantaneously. So now I'm going to go through all the seeds here and pick up the ones I'm going to plant. So let's start out with the, well, let's, I'm going to call them the special category. There's only one potential assignment for all of these. So for a hard contract, it's the Celestia seed. There's a Celestia's patch and that's all you can grow there. So you should always be growing one of those. Another singular one is the White Lily seed. For hard contracts, there's only one assignable flower and that is the White Lily seed. So we're going to go ahead and put that there. And last up, the only assignable cactus patch is the Potato Cactus. So we're going to go ahead and put that there. So we want to plant each and every one of those at all times. So now I'm just going to go through every single patch and plant the most effective seed for that patch. So we'll give you the highest likelihood or the most effective grow time on completing the most amount of contracts. So to begin with here, we have the bush patch. Now we have two options here. We have the white berry seed and the poison ivy seed. It does not really matter. There's only two and they take the same amount of time to grow. So we're just going to plant the higher level one for a little bit more experience. Okay, next up to the south, we have the flower patch. So as I mentioned earlier, the only option for planting here is the white lily seed, which we'll go ahead and plant right away. We're going to use ultra compost for every single one because that'll give us the highest chance of the seeds growing. Now over to our right, we actually have two allotment patches. So what we want to do is plant one of each of the snape grass and the watermelon. Now this is going to vary based on what farming contract here you're doing. So we're going to plant a snape grass in the south patch here. It doesn't really matter too much. And in the north patch, we're going to plant the watermelon seed. So we're going to run up here to the north and plant the potato cactus seed. It's the only option to grow here, so I should always be growing a potato cactus. And we'll plant one here. And that's done with the tier 1 of the farming guild. So we're going to run out of here and go over to the second tier. So now we're going to move on to the tier 2 of the farming guild. So we only have two patches here that we need to worry about. The anima patch is not assignable in a hard contract or any contract to my knowledge. Starting off with the tree patch, we're going to go ahead and put down a magic sapling. And in the south herb patch, we're going to put down, well, we'll put, uh, well, let's see. It doesn't really matter too much for herbs because it's the same grow time. So you might as well just put down something that is profitable. Um, let's try a snapdragon. Now, keep in mind, if you're setting this up for the very first time, you should grab a farming contract first, determine what it is, and put that down regardless of what is the most efficient time-wise because obviously you want to complete that contract. Okay, moving up here to the north wing, we have a few patches we need to worry about. We have the fruit tree patch. We have the Celestris patch, and finally the Redwood tree patch over to the west. The Spirit tree is not assignable, 
So if you have one, I would just either leave it or continuously grow it for experience. So we're going to go ahead and put down a Celestrous Sapling in this giant patch here. In the north, we're going to put down a Dragonfruit Tree only because I'm going for more experience. You can really tailor this to what you want more if you want to spend the least amount on the seeds possible. However, I'm going to put the Dragonfruit Tree Seed here. And finally, in the west wing here, we have the Redwood Tree Seed. This is probably the most important one to have set up because otherwise this will take you three days and you don't want to be waiting around for that. So we're actually not quite 90 yet, so we have to drink a garden pie. Drink a garden pie. Eat a garden pie. Chuck down the redwood tree seed. And wow, that's really, really small. Okay, so anyway, we have planted something in every single patch. If this is confusing at all, the TLDR is just plant something in each patch that is assignable as a farming contract. Anyway, we'll pop back in a few days when everything is grown, and we'll see how many farming contracts we can get done uh, without having to wait. Okay, it's the following morning and everything has grown, uh, so what you need to actually do for patches like watermelons is you need to actually harvest them all. This is because there is no way to check the health of them, you actually need to harvest them to complete your contract. So let's go ahead and grab another one and see if we get lucky and get a plant that we've already planted. So we get the seed pack, which is really what we're doing this for, you get a decent amount of money per seed pack. On average I was getting between 75 and 100k per seed pack. Uh, so next up we have Cadentine. Unfortunately we don't have that planted uh, but there's not really much you can do about that. It's about a 1 in 5 chance if you get a herb patch. Okay so this wasn't a particularly good seed pack but we'll keep track of all the seeds that we get and we'll tally them up at the end just to see how much money we made per actual seed pack. Okay so we finished up our Cadentine run so we got another seed pack here. Uh, next up uh, let's get another hard contract here and we have white berries. Unfortunately we planted the poison ivy berries but just bad luck, so we'll go ahead and plant the poison ivy berries and we'll move on to our next contract. This time we did get two Renar seeds from it, so decent enough, it'll be worth maybe 150k in total. One thing you always want to remember to do is to replant your patches even if your next assignable patch is something else. You always want to have all of your patches fully grown with something that is assignable at your contract level. So next up here we have a very good example of how powerful this technique can be when you get a little bit lucky. So we went ahead and uh, checked our health on our poison ivy bush. Uh, so that's one farming contract completed. So we're gonna go grab another one here and let's go get a hard contract. And we ended up getting a potato cactus. And since there's only one assignable cactus, we can go ahead, check the health on this one and then go claim a second seed pack right away. Again, each one of these is worth around 100K each. So we're making bank right now. Okay, there we go. So uh, we completed another farming contract. We didn't wait any amount of time and there is our second seed pack. So let's go grab another hard contract and look at that we got a magic tree so that's three done in a row without waiting any time at all not to mention we've gotten a watermelon seed and a u seed from this last pack we're trying to keep all the seeds in our inventory but we're running out of space so we have fully claimed the last seed pack let's go ahead and check the health on our magic tree all the while we are getting a decent amount of experience we just got 13k in farming for that however the next seed pack we get could cover that entirely yes we're done another hard contract let's get another one and we have i have poison ivy bears unfortunately we don't have that grown but we were close to getting four in a row and when stuff like this happens is when it really pays off we got three contracts done in the same amount of time it could have taken maybe an entire day to do that normally so we're just depositing the worthless seeds. We're just going to keep the more valuable ones in our inventory. I have so many seeds in my bank, I didn't really feel like cleaning them all out. So we're just going to keep them separated. All right, so currently the seeds are worth around 449k. However, the actual dragon fruit seed is worth 100k more than that. So our poison ivy bush has grown. Again, we want to make sure we are planting a seed in every single batch afterwards. Okay, so we finished up our farming contract. Uh, let's see what we get as our next one. And it's going to be, that's our third Cadentine assignment in a row. So we should maybe plant that one again. Okay, we're back with another farming contract. Let's go ahead and complete it. Thank you for another seed pack. Let's go grab another contract. And it's dwarf weed once again. Okay, we didn't get super lucky on this one because we kept getting the herb patches, which have the highest likelihood of not containing the correct plant. So the seed pack, we got another dragon fruit tree seed, another Renar seed, so a very profitable seed pack so far. So yeah, we're going to see how much money we made from these seed packs, and then we'll subtract the amount it costed. All right, so we completed a few farming contracts. So let's see how much money it cost us to actually complete them and how much money we got in return. Obviously, this is kind of RNG based, but let's go have a look at our profit from the last eight contracts, I believe. So currently we're looking at 1,032,000 in profit. However, I think the dragon fruit tree seeds are worth more. So let's go ahead and sell them on the Grand Exchange quickly. So pretty much the majority of all of your money, as well as all of your costs, are going to be coming from the tree seeds or the fruit tree seeds. So if we dump in the palm tree seeds right now, yeah, they're worth like 100k when in comparison, everything else is worth way less. 
uh, we ended up getting one magic seed which is worth about 190k something around there we got one U seed which is worth around 100k right now we got three renar seeds which are worth 150k in total and we ended up with two dragon fruit tree seeds which we'll just dump in here for this price and that brings our total up to 1 mil 56k we have a few other randoms here uh, but that's probably okay now on top of that we also got a spirit tree seed as well as a hespori seed both of which are untradeable but uh, the Hespori seed can yield rewards on its own. Now, as far as cost, doing farming contracts can be very cheap. The only time where it's going to be expensive is if you get assigned a redwood tree seed, either of the fruit tree seeds or the regular tree seeds. Those ones can cost a lot of money. Now, if you really can't afford it, or you now if you really can't afford it, there's one last technique you can do to avoid doing a tree seed. Most likely, if you right-click on Jane, go to Contract, uh, skip through the first dialogue. Um, you can say, do you have anything easier? And it'll bump you down to a medium contract, in which case you could get lucky and not get a tree seed. You could get an allotment patch or a cactus patch or something like that. And you can do that once again. If you really don't feel like waiting, just keep doing this until you're down to a medium contract or an easy contract and continue from there. Now, the cost of the ultra compost and the seeds is around 205k. If we take into account that there's maybe a 20% chance of a seed dying, it's probably not that high, but let's just say it is. That brings our cost up to maybe 250k, which means we profited around 800k from doing these contracts, where normally it costs you money to do. Now, I could have easily completed these contracts in probably a day and a half. However, I just wasn't at home, so it took me two days. Anyway, guys, that is it. If you have any questions regarding this, don't hesitate to ask any questions down below. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.